a theme mm -hmm. this uh, time out. What is our theme today, Clive? Well, our theme is, uh, how to put this in a nutshell, uh, I guess I'm going to title the episode, Are You Ready? And I guess the, this theme that came to me was, um, normally, I think most of the time, you see a film and you like it or you dislike it and that's about it, right? And there's some that grow on you a little bit or whatever, but in general, I don't think you... Not many times when you have um, massive differences of opinion mm. from viewing to viewing, right? But then there's another specific kind of film, and uh, next episode you have a slightly different theme, which is similar to this, but we'll similar get to that. Different. Yeah, so the specifics of this theme here is that um, films that upon first watching you didn't like, despite them having very good reputations, mm -hmm. or everyone else seeming to like them. Mm -hmm. But something tells you it's you, not the film. Mm -hmm. And you have a feeling that it'll grow on you. Yeah. And it'll come if to you. If you go back to it. You if you go back to it, you have a feeling... If you get another chance, yes. you might. You and might and, you'll, and you're, you're going to give it that chance. Right. Rather than you just have a feeling, you know what, I think I'm just not ready for this. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I th think... Um, I, yeah, I think I'm going to have to grow into mm -hmm. this or whatever. Uh, which sometimes turns out to be good, sometimes it doesn't. And I think... I'm, I don't know exactly here, but what's... Slightly different between my choice and your choice this week. We'll get to your choice later. But in my case, it was something I did go back to, and which I saw for the first time and didn't like at all, and then thought, wow, and then wanted to talk about it. Whereas yours, I think, is... Um, I, we, don't, we didn't know the, the answer until you watched it for this show. Yeah, right? it, I had a lot of trouble choosing a film for this theme, just because... Yes, it's a very specific... It's uh, very specific, and also, generally speaking... If I see a movie that I don't like, there's very few that have actually even given, gone back to it. There's because there's so much to, to watch. Yes. There's so much to do that I just if I've seen a movie that I didn't like, I just can't be bothered spending the time to try it again. Right. right? So right, it's right. so it has to be like something that someone is really really strongly said you really need to go back and watch this movie yes. again yes. Or, or or something or it just happened to be in a place where it's already right. playing so it's very very few movies like this right um, I, I'm not I'm not a big re-watcher myself yeah, yeah, even yeah. of stuff I do like in fact right. one of the reasons I you know started doing mm -hmm. the podcast was it's, it's an excuse to right. go back right. and, and, and re-watch re the things because yeah. otherwise it's it's difficult to justify because mm -hmm. there's so much stuff right. out there. Right? There's so, so, so much stuff. So the problem with myself picking this theme is that I don't know if it was a movie that I just wasn't ready for and that I, if I gave it a second watch, I would like it again. Yeah. Or if it was just a movie that I just don't like, right? Yes. So I, and so I and I wouldn't know that until I saw it again. Yes, but that was the trick was to choose something that you suspected that you actually yes. would like if yes. I liked it. And I think. I, I, as I watched my choice, I was more and more convinced that I had chosen correctly. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still just as yap in a bit of a couple right. of films. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> so anyway... Not to put too much uh, right. false uh, value on what yes. talking about. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, my choice was the 1976 uh, John Cassavetes movie, The Killing of a Chinese Bookie. Um, so, ha you hadn't seen this before? N never even heard of it before. Actually. Oh, okay, be okay. Here, so. so this film, I, I think I first, I'd heard about this film's reputation. I think I first tried watching it, oh, I can't remember, it might be a decade ago mm. or something. And um, there's two very distinct versions of this film, mm. right? So it came out in 1976 originally at 134 minutes, right. flopped badly, and then John Cassavetes somehow got another run at the re-release two years later in 1978 and he cut out I, I think it's about 20 odd minutes or something like that right and then it flopped again I right. think yeah. pretty much. <laughs> yeah, right. but I but I, it's really high, highly acclaimed though so yes yes and I think I think the first time I sat down to watch this I think I watched the original longer 1976 okay. version because this is one of the rare one of those rare instances where the shorter one is Consider the Better. director's cut, right, right. right? But again, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure if 
it, we'll get into it. But um, ju so just so I know how to hedge this, because I'm not quite sure. Did you watch both versions or one version? I, I didn't watch that because basically. Even movies that I love, even my favorite movies in the world, yes. I find it very difficult to watch back to back. Right. <laughs> like, I, I just, e even movies that I just adore, yes. I can't just watch it again the second time. So I see. So, of, so it, you it, wouldn't it, watch Bat Pussy twice in a row. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, so the, 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 the issue is that because the time between our recordings was so short, yeah. that I didn't have time to kind of like... like right. Like have a break between the two right. watchings, so I just said I'll just watch the one and then. Uh, I'll so which one did you watch? I watched the shorter one, which you told me to watch first. The seventy six. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. No. No. Fair enough. That's uh, yeah. yeah. No. I, I get that. So, um, so this is uh, it stars uh, Ben Gazzara. Yeah. So actually, uh, mm. our uh, um, theme this week actually could be subtitled uh, Ben Gazzara Double Bill. Yes, okay, because so Ben Gazzara turns up later again, isn't he? Well, which, I, which I totally forgotten about yeah, yeah. until I was watching the other film. Right, I was right. like, oh, oh yeah, Ben Gazzara. Right, right. <laughs> but anyway, this one is Ben Gazzara's show. Right, yeah. He plays Cosmo... He's more of a, a supporting yeah. character. Yeah, um, Cosmo Vitelli, who um, uh, uh, he runs like a strip joint mm -hmm. on the Sunset Strip, right? A uh, very kind of uh, seedy place. And, um, yeah, uh, plot-wise, this is pretty easy. This is not going to take long. No. So, he, basically, he, he, he runs this strip joint. And um, at least in the... Okay, I'll, I'll just tell a bit, because there's differences between the two versions. Um, um, we'll get to that. I think there's a plot. Um, no, not really, but there's just a bit more... Um, there's a bit more backstory, but I'll get oh, to that. I think it makes sense if we just... So, basically... He is invited to a gambling den, right? Right. By another uh, another guy, uh, Simo Cassell, um, and he loses money. Basically, right. he loses money, and then he owes gangsters money, like, like thirty grand, I think. It was. Yeah, yeah, it's not a ma it's a it's a kind of a everything about this film is kind of seedy, mm -hmm. right? Everything yeah, seedy, yeah. run down, um, and in order to Hey, but it's, uh, apologies for the background noise, by the way. Like undergrads just hanging out outside the door, just yelling about something. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, um, they're, they're probably just shouting how they're huge fans of the podcast yeah. and, and want us to sign yeah, things. Sign yeah. yeah. But, you know, go, go right. away, Fine. leave us alone. We're trying to work. We're, we're yeah. working here. Apart from you, you're kind of hot. You, you come in. Anyway, so... Um, Focus, yes. <laughs> Can I make this bigger? Um, so, in order to pay back his debt, he has to kill someone. Mm. He's asked to murder. Um, we're never exactly told much about it. It's basically the Chinaman, the Chinese bookie. The Chinese bookie, right. But apparently he's an import-export guy, I guess right. he's also a bookie. But basically he's, he's another underworld character, right. I suppose. And one assumes he's muscling in on territory right. or right. something. So Cosmo Vitelli is asked to kill him. I actually just thought he was just like someone who works for them that has, you know, not paid, paid or something. That it was just All like right. No, I got the feeling because he has that big house and everyone I think he's kind of a bit of a hot shot I think oh, in really? that word, I, yeah. I get the impression that after he kills them yeah and then uh, spoiler just, alert yeah so, well it's in the title <laughs> in the title <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, after he kills them and then the uh, uh, Seymour Cassell <coughs> uh, kind of kind of does his revelation to him that uh, you, you, that actually you just killed this this big player yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah it seemed that that was supposed to be a bit of a like a uh, oh a, no no a plot I, twist. That no no I didn't expect that that was. I, I think you're right in terms of how the how the film pl plays out from right. Cosmo Vitelli's point right, of view. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he's he's clued in, yeah. but 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 it, but he is obviously a big right, right, yeah, 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 okay. yeah And I think that becomes apparent to the viewer as soon as he gets to the house. Right, right. right. So um, and plus as well, I think as the film plays out, I get the feeling that um, the the gangsters who ordered him to kill him. Didn't really expect him 
to do it, right? Or yeah. to be successful. Or to do it in the way that he did. Yeah, he just yeah. killed a whole bunch of the people. Yeah. <laughs> a whole and you, bunch of people, right? Because so. it's a bit of a fortress almost, ah, the, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and he gets away with it. So then they're like, oh, oh fuck. So they have kind of... Um, they send someone to rub him out, mm. right? So, and th- that is pretty much the plot yeah. of the film. Um, so, why are we talking Killing of a Chinese Bookie and why is it acclaimed? And, and that's really difficult to explain, I think, that, which is, um, this is going to be rumbling, I, I warn you, from my point so, of the same as usual. <laughs> But there is, just to, to put it out there, uh, front and centre, so we kind of know where I'm coming from, from my point of view, because I'll ask you in a minute now. But for me, this is a case of cinematic alchemy, uh, for me. Uh, this is just, I, I, wa- I watched this again last night. The, um, I, I, when I came back to it, so I re-watched the, the 76 shorter cut a few weeks ago, and I thought, this is fucking brilliant I thought this is genius and then I thought okay I want to do this on the show I want to talk about it straight away but then like you said because we didn't have so much time for watching it for the show again I decided I'll only watch the 78 one and I assumed it was the longer the the longer longer one yeah so I thought okay this maybe it's not going to work quite as well but I think it's even better. Okay. Like the longer version is just. And I was watching it, and I, I just I kept saying to myself, "How the fuck did they? Like, I don't know why this is as amazing as it is. I couldn't tell you why. Um, just to give a kind of feeling for what the film, like, for example, right? This is a Criterion Collection release mm-hmm. now, right? And now there's also there's a Blu-ray, there's a 1080p Blu-ray, but. If you're in a store, for example, if you're in a store and you're faced with the Blu-ray edition and a DVD, and the DVD is much cheaper, mm. just get the fucking DVD because you can't really do much with this image. Mm. DVD is about right. as good as it's going to look right, because right. it's all roaming, handheld, right. cinema, verite look. Mm. It's very great. You know, things go out of focus, Crazy. and you know, it's 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 um, kind of. Um, Amateurish isn't exactly the right word, but it's it's that kind of prowling camera. There's lots of close-ups, and sometimes you're not quite sure what's going on on screen, right? Uh, much like this podcast, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, what's um, that, that? Just looked like you were bowing for them, <laughs> but it was a nice attempt. Um, so. Uh, so, yeah, I can think of a dozen other films that have that look, right? Uh-huh. And it just doesn't work. And also, this doesn't have necessarily the strongest storyline. Right. Well, I can think of another dozen films that don't have a strong storyline, right. and it's just boring. Right. And then I can think of other films as well that attempt this kind of uh, naturalistic kind of, you know... Um, let's see if we can get something and they don't right. and it's just boring for me this film just fucking are oh, they going away this film just grabbed me from the beginning utterly absorbing all the way through in either version and I couldn't tell you I couldn't tell you why. I really couldn't. It's just, but I'm going to try and attempt to discuss that. So I'm very curious as to what your experience was with this film. Well, before we get that, uh, I'm curious because I mean the reason you chose this is because yeah. the first time you saw it, you yeah. didn't like it. No. Okay. So do you, do you have any ideas why that was? No. Uh, that's the thing. When, I, when and how did you see it the first time? Well, I, I can't remember. I, was, I, was, I think I just watched it at home, as, as, like I said, about a decade ago or something, and it had a good reputation. I thought, oh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm interested in this, and uh, I, like, I really like Ben Gazzara, and I understand John Cassavetes' uh, reputation. I have to admit, I'm not that well-versed in his films as a director. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I know him as, a direct, as an actor, of course. Mm-hmm. He's in, you know, all sorts of things, like Dirty Dozen and stuff. Right. He's in a really good movie with... Uh, with um, uh, uh, Peter Falk, that I really, you know, he's just he's one of those guys, and and the reputation, and then I like the idea of this kind of 
I like the idea of it, this kind of scuzzy uh. kind of, uh, you know, um, c- crime drama. Mm. And there's people, there's Timothy Carey's in it. I fucking love Timothy Carey. And I'd heard that originally it started off as an idea between Jack Cassavetes and Martin Scorsese. And I was thinking, oh, maybe it's a bit like kind of mean streets mm. like that. And there's a little bit mm. of that. But, I mean, the way this film looks... It looks. It makes Mean Streets look like uh, Goodfellas, you know. In comparison, it's. I mean, it's real street. There. But when I watched it, it was just ah, oh, flat and boring. But there was something. I, I again, I couldn't really tell you what it was. Something about it told me you're not ready for this. This okay. isn't the film. There's something about it. I just. And it wasn't so much. You know, it's reputation because. Was it just your mindset that, uh, when you were watching it, the particular I don't know. situation that you watched it in? I think I. No, I think I genuinely wasn't ready for it. I didn't have the eyes to see it. Oh. Ten years ago, I didn't have the eyes to see them. Uh, did, the you other, put, did you put this in your book? No. No. no okay. Because I don't think I even reviewed it. Because oh. um, the, the, other, the other film that was vying for. Uh, there was. I had two concepts for this. I was either going to do Killing of a Chinese Bookie or I was going to do uh, Stalker, the Tarkovsky mm. SF movie, because that's another one where I saw it the first time and it was just bewildering, but then I had a feel, and then I did watch it again and I thought, oh, this is, this is fucking amazing. Mm. Like, but I knew, I, I know in, that, in, that, in the case of that film, I understand more that when I first saw it, I just... I didn't have the eyes to see it, right. right? So I suspected that was the case right. with this, but I wasn't sure. But then after I watched it again, I was like, oh man, this, yeah, this is something, this is, it wasn't just, it's good, this has gone into my top ten, kind right. of, oh yeah, I, I, of I, time, really. I could watch this again. Really? Yeah, wow. it's just, uh, and I really couldn't tell you why, but there's mm. something about this film that charms me, mm. like from beginning to end, I just... I go with it and it's just fucking yeah it's difficult to say exactly anyway Ron put me out of my misery what did you <laughs> well, uh, I think mean, of this film I, I, I mean uh, it's quite impossible I mean I don't know how to put this but uh, I, I expected to come down one side or the other with this movie it seems that this movie right. tends to be relatively divisive right. that it's sort of like you either love it or you hate it kind, yes. of, kind of thing and all the reviews that I read kind of seem uh-huh. to be one uh-huh. or the other so you, you, you'd read around it a little bit a before little watching bit, it well, okay. or you know, some, you know yeah. around that time um, but um, to, to be honest I I, I, I I sort of came in the middle which oh, I didn't really? expect to right? okay. so just, I mean I, I, I enjoyed it I thought it was uh, I enjoyed the story I liked, okay. enjoyed the filmmaking I enjoyed uh-huh. it all uh-huh. um, I, I, I thought the uh, I, I, I think I enjoyed it. You also sent me a, a featurette with yes. some, uh, like a f- short fifty-minute, like just a, a discussion about yes, the, the making of yeah, making of a stuff, which actually put a little bit more of a different spin on it than I okay. expected it to. Uh-huh. So I'm glad I watched that. Um, I, I, at first, I just thought the the strip club shows were just really strange, <laughs> right? right, right. Which I, I get was the point, but I was just like, I didn't really get it. But yeah. I, I, after I saw the feature, I sort of I got it a little more. So I think that helped me to appreciate it a little bit more. I didn't hate it, though. I certainly certainly didn't dislike this movie. Okay. Yeah. So I, I expected to either like it or love it or hate it, but I, I just sort of, I, I thought it was well done. Yeah. Uh, I, I, sur- I, I don't think it's in my top ten of any, of any case. You know, okay. But, yeah, um, but uh, I... Yeah, I, I I thought it was maybe again maybe I don't have the eyes to see, but I don't I didn't come all the way down that I hated it. I just right. That's I what just, you mean? Yes. Yeah. I, I just yeah, I thought it was it was it was a fine movie. I thought. It okay, was oh, that's yeah, cool. Was oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, you you didn't find because I think some people uh, find it boring. I think that's um, the main. Th- there were there were elements. I think there were right. times that I thought, but I, I I watched the shorter one, so I think yeah. the the pace has picked up a little bit. I think. More no, I was. That. That's the interesting thing is. Um, Watching the, so, so yeah, so you you were talking about the strip numbers, for example, mm-hmm. and yeah, so the the strip joint they have, they have this, and they have you know, kind of yeah, not very imaginative strip numbers, yeah. and there's this guy called Mr. Sophistication, Mr. Sophistication yeah. which of course was referenced in we saw recently uh. the house that Jack built. Right, right? Yes. I think that is a direct. You think it was? I think uh, so. I, yeah. I, I, I thought about that. I was yeah. It yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Um, I may have to suddenly stop this down to the phone, but I think okay. we we'll just keep running and I'll cut my phone conversation okay. out. 
uh, just to warn the listener. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and the, yeah, there's this guy in a top hat with like a fake moustache, and he ha- it's difficult to judge exactly where this character, Mr. Sophistication, is coming from. Like, it, d- is he, I, I'm getting the feeling he's some kind of washed up, like old stage actor or something? Yeah, who, I, yeah I, I thought that he must have been just some guy who maybe who. Yeah, a stage actor or someone who had done it before and had yeah. done it for so long that he just sort of like right. I'd been around. I don't know. I didn't. He's, he's like, clearly got okay. some tragic backstory yeah, yeah, where exactly, he yeah. can't get work anymore apart right, from yeah, in this yeah. dive this, joint yeah, and he's dive strip he looks so of. fucking miserable, <laughs> miserable. Yeah, yeah. But but he's trying to add a bit of class but, or but something. The, like, the thing that uh, struck me was that I, I, there, it's really like the real like like. Shows like they're they're just putting on like little yeah, plays yeah, yeah. almost like you know like a little, little like song and dance numbers. Right. I, at first, I thought it was the Mister Sophistication himself who is just doing this, uh-huh. and that Ben Gazar is the club owner yeah. who's going to be like, "What the fuck are you doing? This is a strip club. Just do the strip right. job." You know, but it turns out you find out that it actually is Ben Gazar himself who actually has yeah. created these numbers, right? Yeah. Which is, I was like, "Well, why?" <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the thing I couldn't really. I was like, so he's just. I guess he's sort of. Fancies himself a bit of an artiste or yeah. of idea, and so by you know putting a little bit of like class in his right. clubs by putting this type of thing. Right. So, but. but his character Cosmo Vitelli is is brilliant. Well, I think because, just because he he is so um, on the one hand he's so transparent, mm-hmm. like he he's a bit of a wear his heart in his sleeve kind of mm-hmm. guy, and he's you know he's got that that Gazara mm-hmm. smile only Ben Gazara has, and and he, you know he's very kind of polite and he wants to be a man of sophistication and he wants to get into this gambling joint right, and, right, yeah. and you know, I was given unlimited credit with right. you, you know, he, yeah, he wants right, to right. show off because yeah, yeah, uh, right. he, he takes all the girls out to the gambling den with him as well, right, right. and he gives them all cosages yeah, he's all, he's all like, yeah. like, um, like presentation or yeah. show, showing like a, like a role, play I, role again this will come up again and again, again but this is such a film of like I said alchemy and small pleasures as well like, there's, like one scene that made me laugh is uh, because well, well, he, he he has his he has a limo. His sh- chauffeur drives him around, and he picks up each of the girls one by one, right? right. And he gives them the corsage and stuff. And there's like one scene when he's trying to put a corsage on, and he can't do it. And he's like, "Do you, do you know about this?" To the chauffeur, and the chauffeur goes, "I know all about this." And, and you think, "Is he being sarcastic?" Or it's just <laughs> the, so, so he has yes. Yeah, so the Ben Gazzara character has this one side of him where he's desperate for a certain amount of you know to be seen as a, a, yeah, a man of a man classes. Of class. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then on the other hand is that when he's kind of roaming the strip club and he's watching, he, his face you can't tell. Is he pleased? Is he not yeah, pleased? I don't Does know. he think this is good? Because sometimes he seems to come down on like you know you know he's pissed off when the there's some Yahoo is going yeah. like take it off or whatever yeah, you know yeah. get on with it and he's like but then other times he's like. Fucking, you know, he's saying that himself, right? Like, yeah. get on with yeah, the, get on with the yeah. show, right? Because yeah, it's, it's true. so he's clearly some kind of strangely conflicted, yeah, 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 weird character. And then he, there's a scene near the where, when he's not in his own club, he goes to this other bar and he's like pestering the waitress for like scotch and water, and he's like trying to like dance and 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 just liven the place up or something. Yeah. And he's just like, whoa, what are you doing? Yeah, it, yeah. It's just, <laughs> but it's not. Just ra- it doesn't seem ju- it doesn't seem random. It it, se- it seems as if there's a there's a there's a logic underpinning mm. it, it's which like is a, I think is why you go study. yeah, which is think I think why you go with it right. right? Yeah. Um, but you you're never quite privy to to what it is right. Mm. But uh, I Ben Gazzara is fucking amazing in this. Mm. What did you think of Ben? Yeah, Gazzara? I thought it was, it was good. I, I, there's something about his performance in this which is just. Uh, I, uh, he he just seems to be Cosmo Vitelli. He's uh-huh. just fucking. I I could. I, the thing is, you do watch him as well for most of the film. It's uh-huh. mostly him. It's, him, it's yeah, mostly yeah. him. Um. Yeah. So so there are yeah so there are differences uh, between uh, the the opening. I, I think most of the stuff that was cut out seems to have been mostly from the first thirty minutes. Right. Okay. So if you remember the. In the version you watched, Seymour Cassell isn't actually in it that much, mm. which is kind of surprising because he's, you know, he's a, a very respected actor right, yeah. and you know, and a great actor as mm. I always like Seymour Cassell. But um, in the shorter version, when he goes to the when he goes to the gambling place, mm. I don't think you really get to get the sense that Seymour Cassell invited him. 
right? Uh. It kind of slowly comes out or whatever. Right. But in the longer version, there's a whole thing where Sima Cassell comes to Ben Gazzara's mm-hmm. club and he comes in and he talks to him. Oh, I run a gambling club. And it's just, uh. it's just longer. Mm-hmm. And some of the strip scenes, strip scenes are longer okay. as well. And um, yeah, it's just bits, bits and pieces that... And, for me, watching the longer version, it just, um, it's, it's, I, I was trying to figure out why John Cassavetes cut it, right? Because, because mm. the thing is, um, th- there's no way to make this film a commercial hit. Right. It's just not. Right. It's a, it's a very personal mm. kind of, uh, um, you know, rumination. On yeah, part, um, yeah. It's never going to be a hit. Yeah. So what? What is it in the in the feature? It said that it was like almost like his his dealing with his own kind of insecurities and yes. and, and, and uh, ideas about what is art and, and yes. And how, and you can see a little yeah. bit of him in Cosmo Vitelli mm-hmm. and, and yeah, it's and, definitely like a yeah. like a. Semi autobiography. Oh yeah, I think yeah, so. so. Because um, I think they talk about something as well about like like the gangsters represent the people who try and kill your dreams mm. or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, certainly. I mean, if you look at I, again, I, I'm not. I've seen a few of them, and they're all very good. The ones, but when you look at John Cassavetes' filmography as a director, it seems almost. I think almost everything he directed is the way he wanted it. Mm. Right. I'm not sure if he ever kind of. Uh, sold out sold as it were as a director yeah, right. but certainly as an actor mm. as an actor he did all sorts of things I'm guessing he probably wasn't too keen on that was how he made his money to make his films right right right, right. so yeah so, so so there's that aspect um, but what I was thinking I was thinking about right okay he went back in and he recut this film right and he took out but I have no idea what he thought he was achieving because uh-huh. both versions work well. I think the seventy-eight version actually is better, right? Because you have the longer one. You, well, it's longer, so obviously it's, it, it, there's more to it. But it everything makes more. It actually makes slightly less sense in uh-huh. the. So in a way, the seventy-six one is like he's he's almost made it m- more incomprehensible. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I can see, but the, the thing is, I don't, I don't think he. Well, apparently Ben Gazzara was not pleased with the 78 cut. Oh. But I don't, I don't know if John Cassavetes wasn't. I, I, I think it was just... It's easier if you say long or short. I, I can't remember which one is which. Oh, okay. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so it's, just, it's a strange one to have gone in and to have edited your film down right. to make it, in a way, I think it's more incomprehensible or more kind of... It's, it's it's less commercial. It's usually the other way around, of course. Yeah, usually, exactly. It's usually the studio forced you to edit too yeah, much, yeah. and then when you put you add in yeah, stuff that you had to yeah. cut out, right? But now it's the opposite, right? Yeah. Plus, I'm not sure what the motivation was. Like, I, I I'm, <laughs> there's no. It's like I said, you you couldn't you could cut you know everything out, and it still no one would. It's just not that kind of film. Mm-hmm. Right? So, I'm not quite sh- sure what. I'm I, I still don't know what his preferred version was. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my preference is for the longer version. Okay. But um, yeah, so yeah, so so that kind of got me kind of interested. The other thing, um, see, the other thing I think which is amazing about this film as well is it's very rare. I was thinking about the timing and the pace of the film. Right? Mm-hmm. The, like, it's very rare to um, get a film that... Because I, I think they want to convey the day-to-day kind of grind mm. or kind of boredom or just, right. you know. But that's very difficult to because if you do it too long, it just ends up being boring. Mm. But then if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're not confident and you cut too much then you're not in there, right? I think this is one of the rare films where the timing is perfect. So when I come out the end of it, I actually feel like I've been absorbed in this world mm. for a really long time, mm. but not in a boring way. I don't feel... Right. Like, when I come out, I feel like I'm coming up for air. When the film ends, I'm like... <gasps> you know, it's like a... You know... Right, right. right. I, I, it's amazingly immersive, mm. I, I find. Okay. Did you find it an immersive... 
Yeah, I, Phil? yeah, I see. So uh, you're definitely in a in a world. It's a world yeah. building almost. Yeah, there. and again, like in terms of the like the cinema, you you can't say oh that's brilliant cinematography, but then on the on the other hand, it's not. It's captured what it's you know. It's, that's what I was saying about alchemy. It's one of those things where you can imagine another alternative version of this film mm -hmm. where it just hasn't worked at all. When we were talking The Longest Summer, we were talking about how it's a little bit scrappy because mm -hmm. maybe they didn't get the footage. Right, right, right. And that could have happened with this film. Mm -hmm. right? There's like the parts of it, I can't, they, they must, they can't, I can't see how they could have grabbed some of the scenes in this unless there was that perfect kind of knife edge balance between everyone so immersed in their character and in the world, but also there's the freedom to suddenly ad lib or do something different. Or, do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't feel labored like they've gone over the. Right. There's, there's some scenes with Ben Gazzara, like after the murder, and he's talking to his girlfriend's mother, I think, mm, is it? Yeah. The, the black lady. Mm. And. Um, and he's just like, oh, I don't know what to do with my hands, he's saying. And it's just like, yeah. that well, just really, seems so real. It just uh, seems mm -hmm. so... That, uh, that, that was one thing I want to say, is that scene specifically uh, took me out a little bit. I was oh, really? interested on that particular scene. Because okay. like, um, that scene specifically I could tell, and they, and they confirmed my suspicions okay. in the... Uh, um, in the, the featurette, uh -huh. is that that scene specifically was, was improvised. improvised. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, it, yes. Yeah. And, and, I, and as I was watching it, I was like, I could tell, and you know, that was the thing is that because Vidis use a lot of like, um, kind of not necessarily amateur actors, but like mm. some sort of inexperienced actors or right. actors, people right. that weren't even act, actually actors. They were just right. sort of like people he found to fill the part. And uh, I could tell in that scene that it was being improvised and that the woman was not a particularly uh, experienced actress, and so right. that was, I, I got taken out of it a little bit uh, in sort okay. of the immersiveness, okay. because I could tell that what was happening was sort of being right. ma made in the moment, but it wasn't, I didn't right. find it entirely realistic. Right, right, so right I see what you're saying. So you're, so you're yeah. saying that was maybe, or, or maybe it was a, um, maybe other scenes in the film were also improvised, but they were kept in because they were. I guess so, And this yeah, one this, should this have one been... Specifically, I, I felt it more. Okay. Like, it, like it, it's, like, I could, I could see the improv improvisation. Yes, I can, I can see that to a certain extent. I can see exactly what you mean, but, mm. but also at the same time, I suppose, I think, um, I think, uh, Ben Gazzara almost rescues it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd say uh, yeah. Ben Gazzara, like the thing with, the, I know, with my hands, is yes, that it is yeah. very real. It's and him yeah, he, kind of... He did a very good job of that, but I yeah. think he, uh, putting him against an experienced actress right. who's also trying to, uh, right. it, it sort of, it didn't into okay. always it didn't work as well as I yes. thought it could have. No, no, no I, I, I know what you mean. And we talked yeah. a little bit of this before when we were talking uh, Out of the Blue, right? Mm -hmm. Is That is the risk with this kind of thing where you... You, you put a uh, very war hall thing as well, you put mm. experienced actors with non actors, mm. yeah, and right. sometimes it, it works, works sometimes brilliantly. And then yeah. sometimes, yeah. yeah. So, again, coming back to the, the alchemy mm. thing. Um, the, other, the other thing that fascinates me about this film as well, I, I don't know how familiar you are with um, Timothy Carey. Not very much. Right? Okay, Timothy Carey is the, the guy in this. He's the one, um, he's, the, he's one of the gangsters. I'm trying to. He's the one with the, like the thick eyebrows and mm. the very kind of stern. Yeah, that's okay, yeah. Timothy Carey. Yeah. Now Timothy Carey's a um, major cult figure, mm. and, and uh, he's most famous for like for, he's the sniper in Stanley Kubrick's The Killing, mm. and he's in he's in so many movies, but right. usually in very very small parts. He also right. directed. I would actually love to do on the show one day. He did a director film called The World's Greatest Sinner, uh, which mm -hmm. is really interesting. But Timothy Carey is a fascinating character. And but what's fascinating about Timothy Carey is um, he's most famous for like being a total scene stealer. Oh, okay. Like um, and driving uh, directors and fellow actors just fucking crazy. I, I, of course, I think he's in The Wild One. So I think okay. He upstages uh, Marlon Brando. Right? Okay. And he's he was just this, and um, he's become a cult fi a figure. A friend of mine was a major Timothy Carey fan who had like this compilation tape of like uh, all Timothy Carey's scenes from okay. films because he's usually in films of very he's got a great scene in like Poor White Trash where he does this weird dance thing and he's he's just he's one of those guys you you watch him and. Guaranteed, 
you know, uh, he'll just be in the periphery of the frame and he's just doing something <laughs> that's just drawing. <laughs> you know, but not, not in a, like a, a, like it's always good, it's always interesting. Like oh, he's just yeah. fascinating and it's always a little bit weird. And he has these really strange, uh, I suspect, I, I have no, nothing to back this up, but I reckon Nicolas Cage is a Timothy Carey fan. Okay. I can draw a line between the because Timothy Gary makes these really weird choices and they're like you just you could be clenched teeth right, right. so what fascinates me as well about his his contribution to the killing of a Chinese book is I again this could be total bullshit some will say no they hated each other or whatever, but I suspect Timothy Carey and John Cassavetes must have had some real uh, kind of uh, um, mutual respect or awesome. something because well for a start John Cassavetes casts this notoriously humming it up scene stealer in this very kind of naturalistic kind of right. movie. And Timothy Carey kind of repays the favour by not going Only over the top. Right. Like, I don't think I've ever seen Timothy Carey in anything before where he's just part of the ensemble. Yeah. And he's really good at it as well. He's yeah. just like, you know, he's. He, he, there's, 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 I, I don't know if this is in, I, the, in the shorter cut. But watching, there's one scene in the longer cut. And it might be in both. You tell me, there's one scene. The last time you see Timothy Carey's character, he's in like a car, and just before he drives off, he does this <laughs> face at the bend his <laughs> arrow through a car window. Just vaguely familiar. I can't remember. Yeah. And that's the only one bit where you're yeah. like, "What the fuck <laughs> was that?" <laughs> it's just really it's peculiar. Like let him off the leash. Yeah, there, yeah. So. Yeah. so um, well, well, no. That's the, I think the thing with him with the carry is no, no one lets him off the leash except himself it's as well, right? Carry, so, yeah, yeah you, you know, you, you can't rein in to the carry. Yeah, right. it, it, he was notorious apparently for like pestering Stanley Kubrick for years, mm. and, like trying to get him, trying to break into his house and like audition for him and stuff. Oh, really? oh yeah, he's hell of a. You're reading about Timothy Gary is fascinating. Mm. So just to see him in this movie and just to see him like Tony Day is just oh wow wow that's that's kind of that's that's what's the story there you know mm. like um, also in it is Val Avery was in it and um, uh, one of the strippers was Haji from um, Russ Meyer movies. Okay, she was in there as well. Um, yeah, so the thing with the killing of a Chinese bookie, I'll give you the floor here, Ron, because basically. I can just blab about this. Mm. I, oh yeah, sorry. One other scene which I crack. I mean, I laughed in this film mm. a lot, mm. more than I most of them. But there's one brilliant scene uh, where he's on his way to kill the Chinese bookie, and um, he gets into a, like a bit of trouble on the highway or something with his car. He almost crashes his car. And then he's like, oh, I, I guess it's just he, he needs some reassurance or a link or something because he's losing his mind. And he goes to a telephone kiosk on the side of the road, right? And he phones the club, right? And mm. he's asking the right, barman, right, right, and, yeah. yeah, what's going on on stage or whatever. Right. And he's like, what do, you, what do you mean you don't know? The, and he starts singing, you can't wear anything but love, baby, like down the phone. And that scene's just, that, that had me howling with laughter. <laughs> was, that a, was that a scene that stood out for you? Or? I remember the scene. I don't. I don't I oh, didn't, okay. I, didn't, I wasn't laughing, but oh, I, okay, I, I, okay. I definitely remember. Did that you scene. laugh at all? Uh, I don't remember laughing. Okay. No, yeah, for me, it wasn't much of a a, a, a comedy. Okay, but, but uh, did you find scenes uh, amusing, or it didn't play that way to you at all? Yeah, I, I, I found it. I was I was entertained all the way through. I don't okay. think I was ever bored, but I okay. don't think I was ever like like slapping my knee. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like I said, I can just, I just can go on and on and like, but that's not much fun for this. Uh, so I'm actually just going to shut up now. And um, do you have anything to add uh, either about th how this connects to the theme or just the anything you want to, uh, anything perplexing or uh, anything at all? Uh, I, I was, again, I was, I knew you were going to take this away because I, 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 <laughs> I, I, as I said, I kind of came down we're in the middle of it. It was right. a fine movie, but I didn't really have any strong feelings okay. one way or the other about much about anything. I thought, like, uh, again, I, I thought the the strip club shows were a little bit uh, uh -huh. bewildering, but then once I put it in the context of what he was trying to do with the movie and I kind of took it in the context of that it was more of a uh, metaphor for John Cassavetes right. as an artist, right. I kind of got it all and it made more sense and yeah, and it was, yeah, it was, Fine. It was entertaining. Okay. Yeah. It was. Um, 
Uh, I know you're saying that uh, Ben Gazzara is just immersive as the character, but he, yes. he himself apparently had a lot of trouble getting into the character. Oh, okay. Uh, I was reading that, um, uh, what was it, he, uh, he couldn't connect to the character, okay. and he was unhappy with the role. Uh, and then, uh, but during the, uh, the scene with the, the gangsters as a metaphor for the people trying to steal yeah. people's dreams, yeah. uh, Cassavetes was explaining this to him in person. Right, uh, right. And apparently Cassavetes started to cry while he was explaining right. it to him. And right. then he sort of like said, ah, I got it. Okay. So it was like a metaphor for your own struggles. And then after right. that, apparently he got it. So, yeah. So, so. But um, um, Ben Gazzara apparently didn't like the longer cut. Cause no, no, long. no. So he thought that the long, short one was better, so... Ben Gazzara, actually, he's, he's, uh, he's a fascinating, he's one of those guys, um, you know, I've always known who he is or whatever, but it's taken me a long time to appreciate him as well, to certain, not, not so much as I didn't like him or anything, but he really seems like, um, uh, talking about this movie and other movies, um, for example, you know, some actors, they talk, they talk too much, actually, about their craft or right, whatever, right, yeah, and, yeah. and you just think, just fucking act, <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> shut the fuck up, or they just, you know... But Ben Gazzara is one of those guys who's, I, I get the feeling, he really cares. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I don't mind hearing him talk about this stuff because uh, I, he, he's not, I, I don't get the feeling that he's just absorbed in himself uh, or he likes to hear himself talk. I get the feeling that he really wants to do the job right. He, uh, and you can see that on he's just got this kind of look like he's just fucking struggling. Uh, and, <laughs> and I think... Clearly, there are, he's a lot of kind of really interesting directors over the years have have used him as well. And uh, I, uh, if you remember as well, a, a good example is um, uh, Roadhouse. <laughs> he's not in Roadhouse. He is. is he? He? Yes. Fuck. That's the first movie on his IMDb page. What Roadhouse? The Patrick Swayze yes, film. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Wow. Because I think he started in uh, live television, New York. He's the fourth billing on that. Yeah, oh, I don't remember him. Being, everyone's got to pay the bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but but it's fun. so I, I actually kind of want to see Roadhouse again now, just to see <laughs> yeah, what he's like him, in yeah. it. Um, but I think for, he's a bad guy. I think. But for example, um, um, a, a good example was um, when Vincent Gallo used him in Buffalo '66, uh, right, as his father. Right. I, and that's another like really no, like it was one of because because uh, you know. Vincent Gallo is very much that kind of uh, wear your influence in your sleeve kind of guy. So you know when he, he casts someone has his dad in his yeah. somewhat semi autobiography you know the casting is really important. important to him, yeah, yeah. And Ben Gazzara is knocks out of the park in that yeah. in that film as well, right? But you, you, you just he kind of carries this sense of history with him, oh, wasn't right. it? Uh, maybe even in Roadhouse, I don't right, know. Yeah. Or maybe <laughs> I'd have to watch it. Uh, um, to, yeah, again. He, he's probably been a bunch of crap over the years as well, right? Right, yeah, yeah. But um, h how about, we, what's your, uh, have, do you know much about John Cassavetes? Have you seen any other John Not Cassavetes? much, yeah, I mean, I okay. know about the Wild Bunch and, you know, and that kind of stuff. But right. uh, I know, I, I, I mean, he's sort of famous for being sort of a... Uh, um, you mean Dirty Dozen? Well, it's sorry, Dirty Dozen, yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, my, I, I actually don't, I haven't seen many, or if any, hmm. Cassavetes film, but I know he himself is famous for being... Violence is what I is what the is the um, really? but that, that's that's the association I've always had to him is that Casavetes is always like ultra violent movies which well see maybe now that's, maybe that's just the Dirty Dozen or something I don't know what do I, now but the, it's interesting is this a, a Freudian slip or something um, because you did mention the Wild Bunch as opposed to Dirty Dozen right so it's almost like you're confusing John Casavetes with Sam Peckinpah. No, uh, Cassavetes as well. Yeah. Okay, pick up really? Violence? Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but I mean, that, that's the, what I'd always heard. But again, I don't, I don't know any of his movies, so right. I could be mistaken. So. No, no, no. Well, you, you are mistaken, but that's not the point. The point is, obviously, you, you, you got You're this. You're mistaken. <laughs> Your mother's mistake. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Scott. I know you do listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, what I mean is... What's interesting about that for me is, is not to you know point out yeah. the mistake. Is is I'm wondering w where that got into your head from. I, like, I don't know. I just I, I've always associated the name Casavetes huh. with with violent movies, but interesting. Uh, I don't. I, again, I haven't seen right any, maybe any of his movies. So okay, uh, so, okay. Um, that's, which is why when I saw this, I was a little surprised. I thought 
there's going to be more violence, right. you know, kind of, rather well, than just the one... The, the reason I thought you might know more about Kirk, because you're um, more of a th- theatre guy as well, mm. I mean, and not so much the cast of the theatre guy, he's, he's kind of, you know, he's, you know, he's one of the, uh, the you know, uh, uh, kind of godfathers uh-huh. of avant-garde, right, underground right, yeah. American cinema, is um, a lot of his films do, like Chinese Bookie does to a certain extent, Play a lot more uh, like uh, long form theatre in a way, mm-hmm. you know, long takes rather than than a film, right? And a lot of his films are people, uh, you know, talking things out rather than you know, uh, kind of set pieces and stuff. Right. So I, I think he's probably a director that a lot of. Uh, theatre people really like as well. So I just thought maybe you might have prob- come to I, him. I probably uh, would appreciate his movies more yes, if I yeah. didn't know a little more about him. But uh, right. I have to, again, I'll get around to watch them sometime. Yeah, I need to get more. To be honest, watching the, the uh, Killing Chinese Book has affected me. So I, I've definitely put it front and centre to mm-hmm. what, get more into kind of, I mean, right. who knows? Maybe this is an anomaly. anomaly. It anomaly, might right, be yeah. the one. and. But uh, yeah, certainly it's got me interested in investigating him uh-huh. more. Um, yeah, so like I said, I, 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 you know, I can go on for hours, or I think I'll just stop. So, <laughs> so unless you have um, something else to add, we'll we'll go on to your choice. Libya has a bomb, a killer for president, the rainforests are gone, it snowed in Malibu, Yosemite burnt down, and planes are flying right into the ground, it's drowned and then it's flood, diseases in blood, but the thing that made me cry was when John Cassavetes died, I cried when John Cassavetes died. The sun will give you cancer, there's no swimming in the ocean And superstars go hunting, there's needles in the sand And kids kill their parents to get a Trans Am It's drought and then it's flood, diseases in blood But the thing that made me cry was when John Cassavetes died I cried when John Cassavetes died I cried when John Cassavetes died Pause it then. No, no. Let, let's. Uh, we'll quickly go in, and then if we need to stop, we will stop. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so yeah. So uh, warning to the listener, because we we we've kind of rented a room here. So um, so the sound quality might suddenly change, and we'll be 
recording in a different location. Right. So we'll see. So if that happens, that's what Our happens. Apologies, yeah. Right, so. Okay, so going into my uh, right. theme, uh, my my sorry, my choice, well, no, yeah. my choice for the, the theme. Uh, mm. uh, so I went with the Coen Brothers uh, uh, comedy, The Big Lebowski. Okay, from '98. Uh, from 1998. Uh, so uh, again, so uh, when I first saw this movie uh, years ago, and back in the '90s, mm. I. Uh, I just didn't get it, right? I know, okay. I did know, you see it in the theater? Or? Uh, I don't think so. I think it must have been on, D- okay. on, on VHS. I did see this one in the theater. I don't remember if I did or not. And if it did, again, it didn't have, right. have any particular uh, like impression on me. Right. Uh, but I do remember, I think I feel like I, I think I saw it uh, on... Uh, I think I know where I saw it. And I think I saw it on, on VHS after okay. it came out. And uh, But I remember I just sort of like... It was just sort of like a, I don't know. I just didn't really get it. It was just sort of like okay. a, it was it was fine, but it wasn't like I was like I and then but I know people love right. this movie. Like so there's like a cult around this movie. Like there was like, so, and I was like I just never really got it. I never like. So why? when you you saw it, it was still relatively new. Yeah, I think yeah, okay. I think so. But yeah, so when you did see it, were you going? Were you? Uh, Already a, a Coen Brothers fan, or were you just I, coming at a? I was. I think. I think I wasn't. I think I was just seeing. It was. Okay. I think. I think. Yes, actually, when this actually, yes, I do remember exactly where I saw this. When this came out, actually, I was working at Blockbuster. Oh, okay. And I remember I used to stock this movie. This on is the a, an old, a younger generation. This yeah. is an old chain store <laughs> that that, <laughs> that had films on something called video cassette. VHSs, uh, yes. 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 Uh, and so I, I used to work at Blockbuster. So we used to get. Um, uh, uh, free movies, and I th- I'm, I'm sure Big Bowski was one of the movies that I rented uh, for, okay. f- for like free or whatever with my membership. Um, and uh, I remember, yeah, watching it and just being like, by yourself. Uh, I probably, I, I guess, I don't remember exactly, okay. but I do remember. Um, uh, I me- do remember having it being on the shelf, working when it was on the shelves, working when it was popular, people renting it, yeah. and having people give their reaction to it, which was okay. usually quite popular, and myself watching it, and then just being like, meh, yeah, it was okay. just sort of, it was, a, it was fine, right? For, so. for my viewing, I seem to remember it was uh, 98, so uh, it would have been uh, towards the end of when I was in sixth form college, and one of our friends had passed his license and had a car, Mm. so finally we could go, you know, we were autonomous and we could drive to a theatre. I I think we went to see, so this was one we specifically wanted to go and see. I think, I remember we went to see this and Boogie Nights, I remember being another one around that time. It was all around the same time. Yeah, yeah. All those, I stopped those movies on the shelves. Right, right, right. Um, So they were like, at least two or three of us would have gone and, you know, we would have chatted about it after mm-hmm. and stuff. So it was, you know, it was a, a, a good kind of, uh, you know, golden glow of right, youth right, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. Hanging out, drinking in the parking lot and yeah, that yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have a positive or what was your reaction to it? When well, it's stuff? interesting. I, um, um, we'll get into this more, obviously, and, and we'll explain what the film's about as well, but um, I, I, your reaction to it is is doesn't surprise me mm. because I was a Coen Brothers film before I'd seen this. Mm. Um, I'd liked all their films pretty much up to then, and um, I, I and I watched it and I really enjoyed it. Uh-huh. But I remember it's funny because look, when I was researching this, uh-huh. the, the 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 what people seem to say is that. It was a flop on release, mm. and it slowly gathered this massive mm. cult following right, right. in the yeah, which in happens. the interim. But I don't quite remember it like that. I remember it being quite popular right off the bat, straight away, I and and getting a cult following yeah. straight away. Yeah, like, I thought so too. Yeah, I, I seem to remember yeah. people like, "Ah, oh, Big Lebowski, it's fucking hilarious, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. dude is just the cool." And I saw it, and I enjoyed it, but. There were there was a bit of me thinking, wh- what's why? The, yeah, yeah. What's the big thing. Right? Yeah, what exactly. Is, like what? What? Yeah. What? What? Uh, for, uh, yeah. So, um, well, tell us what the movie's about, okay, Ron, so before we continue, because some people yeah. might not have seen the big. Uh, okay, so uh, it's it's hard, it's hard. What is this movie about? <laughs> right, so <laughs> yeah, well, well, he's he's uh, the big Lebowski is uh, so starring uh, of course uh, Jeff Bridges, yeah, uh, who plays uh, uh, 
Jeffrey Lebowski, yeah. who, who never gets called Jeffrey Lebowski. He's no. called the dude, right? He's and the so, dude, or and he's El Dudorino, El Dur- or yeah, his dudeness. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, and he basically, he's just kind of like loser who kind of... Well, he's an old hippie. He's an old hippie yeah. that kind of hangs out in his bathrobe and like these really old, like you like shitty clothes. He right. doesn't do anything. He's between jobs. He's, not he's a slob. He's yeah. a slob. Yeah. He just kind of hangs out. He doesn't do anything. He likes to. He smokes a lot of weed. Yeah. The you know? the 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 the, the, the uh, there's an interesting. Uh, we'll talk about this later. But there's an interesting music plays a big part. Right? Mm-hmm. Right, but right. Uh, from the beginning, the first song you hear when the narration starts is this. Uh, uh, tumbling tumbleweeds by the right, Sons yes. of the Pioneer. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And of course, the Coen Brothers are always really oh, yeah, very specific. Very specific yeah. about their movie music. And so, so, like, um, yes. so the, he's the, this song kind of yeah. He's he's just this tumbling tumbleweed, yeah, this guy rolling, rolling through, through life. Through life. Yeah. He has no no connections, no nothing. He's just enjoying his life, doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, kind he, of. Um, he can never really tell if he has he has money. Yes. He's living off of his sa- off of this whatever money, but yes. or if he's just broke and he's has, right. You right. know, there's you know imply implications that he hasn't paid his rent and you know, yes. that kind of stuff. He's, but, he's, he's uh, just uh, tumbling around Los Angeles. Uh, appar- right? Apparently, an earlier draft of the script which got cut, he was actually the the um, inherent heir of, heir of the Rubik's Cube yes. for, fortune yes. or something like that. But uh, you, you get more of the impression in this version that he has no money. I'd right? say so, because so, w- yeah. one, uh, one little uh, detail I quite like is they could have easily have had him just uh, smoking weed through mm-hmm. the whole, but p- specifically he has... Uh, Roach clips. Yes. Right. And he's he's yeah. always just just savoring the yeah, last, very last fucking little, little like whatever. Yeah. He's real he's real like roach. thrifty and yeah. you know, so. so anyway, so it's just him whatever and then these uh, randomly these guys he's a he likes to bowl, he bowls with his friends who are yeah. a little kinda strange bunch. He, yes. uh, we have, Brilliantly played by John Goodman, uh, John Goodman who plays uh, and, um, and, Buscemi, and, right? and Steve Buscemi, right? So the two, the two of them, the three of them are just great right. together. Uh, um, Steve Buscemi actually, particularly in terms of, um, I mean, because John Goodman has stuff to do. Yes, Steve Buscemi has little Very to little do, to, but, he's but he does great, it. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. It's, but it's more of his reaction and how they treat him, right? So he's yes. like this sort of. He doesn't say much. No, everything he said. Somebody said they would say, "Shut the fuck up." You know? Yeah, shut it's the, it's funny. Shut the fuck up, Donny. Yeah. I've seen this a few times, and and a couple of times I've watched it like those with their scenes together. I I've just watched Steve Buscemi yeah, yeah. just to watch his yeah, reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's always there. Yeah, he's there. Yeah, he's yeah. full on. Yeah, so I, I'm a huge Steve Buscemi fan. Uh, it also has Julianne Moore as. Uh, so anyway, the. Um, so he likes to bowl, and uh, randomly these two kind of gang- gangster low-life mm. types break in and uh, rough him up a little bit, th- throw him into the toilet and uh, piss on his rug right. and say, where's the money, Lebowski? I want right. the money, but right. he doesn't know what is happening. It turns out that it's a case of mistaken identity with another guy who has the same name who's actually like a m- millionaire, right? right. And, so, um, and so then they realize their mistake and leave, and then so now uh, so the dude is... Uh, understandably upset because mm. uh, they pissed on his rug and the rug, you know, ties the room together. Yes, <laughs> which is a theme. Right, right? and uh, so he goes to visit the millionaire with the same name to see if you 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 can replace his rug. You know, yeah. to give him some money back because because it was sort of a mistaken identity, and he feels these sort of. Uh, and his friends kind of build him up to kind of get this kind of like yeah. kind of um, uh, righteous anger to yeah, you, know, well, you know to specifically kind of John Goodman right? John Cause, Goodman because so he's full like, of righteous anger yes right? he, so, he's like a he's like a non vet right. which he keeps re- he repeating over and over, yeah, over, yeah, over yeah. Right? and so then and he, he, uh, he always fights for the principle of the thing right? he has yeah, this so, rage yeah, and, yeah yeah so so he goes into the millionaire to kind of state his case and the millionaire is a bit of a dick and then sends him on his way and, and yells yes, at him the, and the, the other, um, the uh, other Jeffrey Lebowski Jeffrey Lebowski, played yeah. by uh, David Huddleston, David Huddleston yeah. who's also really good really as good, like yeah. um, he again it's, it's he's sort of like a Daddy Warbucks yes type kind of. and, and he's you know he's always on about you know the pull yourself yeah. up by the boot I yeah. didn't yeah, yeah, you know exactly. if I can make yeah, this yeah, and okay. I didn't have the I use of my legs yeah yeah, yeah 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 so uh, and uh, yeah and so so then you think that's sort of it, and he goes off. But then, uh, then he gets drawn back in with this sort of. Then it turns out that his uh, he has a very young uh, kind of trophy wife. Uh, the yes, Lebowski, the big Lebowski. Yes, uh, the, the the big Lebowski, which yes. is the uh, the actual the millionaire. The, yeah. big, the title big Lebowski is actually the millionaire Lebowski. Not right, the dude. right. And so he's got this sort of really young trophy wife played by Tara Reid of Van Wilder uh, fame. <laughs> Van Wilder fame, yes. and uh, and then she gets uh, kidnapped. So and it seems. so, and yeah. s- as it seems, and then brings in the dude to help him 
uh, like mysteriously asks him to help f- uh, solve the mystery of where uh, yes, to, all, gonna, to get well, the money or to hand be the, be the yeah to be the courier the courier right? of yeah. the money and stuff yeah, that, right yeah. so and, so, and yes and uh, the, yeah the, at this point as well coming into the movie is uh, another brilliant performance is uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman yeah, yeah. plays uh, 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 Big Lebowski yeah he's yeah. kind of a, and uh, he's he's really, really good yeah, as yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and then also, we also meet uh, Maud Lebowski, who is uh, um, Ma- who is the uh, daughter of the Big Lebowski, right? Yes, and she's, estranged daughter. Estranged right? daughter, who's like this kind of like um, she's based on uh, someone specifically, but uh, like uh, these real kind of like feminist art artist, uh, right? You know, with this very you know, affected, yeah, affected, almost know. British kind of yeah, accent, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah, like, Do you like Atl- sex? Yeah, do you? Atlantean, yes, Atl- coitus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's like. You first, you see her. She's like naked in like this kind of like stirrup swing, like yeah, she's, painting and she's stuff. She's making like, this really she's pretentious, real, like yeah, pretentious action yeah, painting. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, so she and so she gets involved as well. She she she's also awesome. Yeah, she's <laughs> really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah. so uh, everyone is is really really like anyway. So. Um, I mean, to, to, the story goes on, and I can already tell before we get there. This movie has clearly grown on you over the years, and yeah. you as well. Right? Oh yes, yes, yes. yes, 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 and you. yes. So, um, so the um, anyway, the uh, so basically, what happens is that we find out that uh, even though that some of them they suspect that maybe she's just uh, kidnapped herself to get the money, right. and it turns out that that is actually correct that she has kidnapped herself, and then and then these. Random German nihilists get involved as well, yes. and they they try they're trying to get them because they're cleaning Including Peter Pe- Storm yeah, 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 and yeah. flee yeah, from and the red flee, red red peppers, yeah. And uh, uh, side note, I've actually uh, I actually met. Did I tell you that my Peter Stormare uh, no. j- uh, story where he Peter Storm Stor- I think it's Stormare or Stormare. I don't know. I'm not sure. It, he has a Japanese wife, and so he actually is that right? I actually saw him at the water park. Oh. One day, yeah, I ran into Peter Stormare at, at, at the water park one day. The, the one uh, in um, uh, um, to, uh, Toshimayan? No, uh, in uh, uh, um, uh, Yomiuri Land. Oh, okay. Yeah, Yomiuri Land. So, yeah, we were, yeah, he has... He has How a, long ago was this? Uh, this was two years ago, I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, two, so, so do you think he spends at least some of his time in Japan? Yeah, so he, he does. So his wife is Japanese, and I think he has a half-Japanese... Is, is one or two children, I All think. Right. So, so he you know, has a family here. So, so I think he huh. he has a base here. So, okay, yeah. So, uh, randomly, I was like, hey, that's the guy. Okay. Is that, that guy? You, right? Did so, you leave him alone, or did you? Uh, pass yeah, him? I didn't. I didn't pass him. Yeah, okay, because so, yeah, I because I, at the moment he's one of those guys that you've seen him in so many things. Yes, but you, his name always escapes me. Right. right, I can never remember what his right. name is. So I don't want to be the guy like, hey, you're that guy, right? If I knew who he was, I was feeling maybe, hey, Peter Stormare. Right, but uh, I, um, he's one of those guys. Actually, I I really like Peter Stormare, but he's. I can never tell if he's um, actually really good. Yeah. I can't tell if he's or a really... just well cast. Yeah, or, yeah. or more than that, if he's a really good well, actor direct. who occasionally just lazily hums it up. Yeah, yeah. Or if... Yeah, again, maybe sometimes he's well cast and actually he's not that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> somehow I don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Whenever I, I see I usually him. enjoy him when anything yeah, he, is he, he, so. he's The thing is, he's in a lot of crap as yeah, well. He's yes. in a lot yeah, yeah, of yes, crap. Yeah. Again, like Nicolas Cage. Mm. But he's almost kind of... Uh, he's worth watching. Right, right? Yeah, His yeah, yeah. bits are... Yeah, yeah. And he, it's weird. I don't know quite how he does it. But he's, yes, there's some, he's obvi- obviously the camera really likes yeah, him. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So anyway, so he and Flea and this other person are their German nihilists who are also in this kind of daft punk kind of uh, kind of uh, electronic band. Yeah, well, more like a craft work. <laughs> like craft, craft work, yeah, 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 yeah. Craft yeah. work, yeah, it's probably better. Um, and uh, they're taking responsibility for the kidnapping, but it's obviously fake, and they're trying to get the money. And, and so then there's a whole bunch of, like, kind of double crosses where yeah. the, them throwing out the money, but then uh, it turns out John Goodman has thrown out his dirty underwear, but then it turns out that there was never any uh, kidnapping well, yeah. in the first place, and da 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 And, and then yeah. um, also it turns out that, that um, Tara Reid had been in a porno film yes. called Log Jamming, Log Jamming which is <laughs> fucking so good uh, we're with Peter Storm and yeah, yeah. Asia Carrera and Carrera, Carrera was yeah. also yeah, yeah had a, a cameo there um, and uh, and Ish Carrera being an actual porn star for those of you who don't yes, know yes. Uh, and um, I didn't know that I had to look it up right yeah <laughs> And uh, yeah, and so then eventually, I even had to look it, up the word porn. <laughs> it, it sort of uh, they it comes out that she had actually just uh, kidnapped herself, and then uh, uh, and at the end he uh, sort of gets his 
or how would you say how it ended? Like, uh, um, well, I don't know. I'm, I mean, the thing is, it's it's not it's much of a wrap up. No, it's it's all it's about it's the it's the journey, it's the not journey, the not destination. The destination. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, and uh, it's clearly, I mean, um, it's 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 uh, the what's in the background is Raymond Chandler, right? Mm-hmm. And specifically, I think it's. There's a there's the Robert Altman version of the long goodbye with Elliot Gould mm. as like a kind of stoned hippie Philip Marlowe, right? right? right yeah. And then oddly enough, this comes like in between that, mm-hmm. and then um, like years later, Paul Thomas Anderson made his own version of that kind of thing, Inherent Vice, mm-hmm. which right. again is that kind of stoned hippie private detective kind of character wandering right. about LA, right? right? And the Big Lebowski just kind of yeah, it comes slap bang in the middle of these two things. But but being a, it's a Coen Brothers film as well, so it it's it brings in a lot of other obsessions. And, yeah, so yeah. I, I, yeah, I a specific I mean there's a there's a lot to get through, but uh, specifically I suppose the the one thing that is the uh, it's famous for is the, this two particular dream sequences, right? right? Yes. Uh, when he's knocked out or whatever, yeah, and yes. he has these two uh, two kind of really elaborate dream sequences. Uh-huh. One in particular, which is a, 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 like a Bubs B. Berkeley-style uh, yeah, yeah. uh-huh. uh, dance sequence with yeah. Ju- Julia Moore dressed as kind of like a, uh, like a kind of Norse kind of goddess uh, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, and and it's bowling themed. Yeah, yeah. And he's and in this bowling ball. Yes, and he's like the point of view of the bowling yes, ball. Yes, and he, he goes down through the and, and, and it's also it's, it's called gutter balls. Gutter balls, isn't it? yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which later became a, um, a a kind of a, a bit of a cult, low budget kind of a, a horror film. From oh, the really? Yeah, oh. with like a, a kind of a lot of nudity and sex mixed in oh, there. Okay. So it's a, a kind of rough-edged, kind of slightly oh, okay. trauma kind of oh, style, right, which okay. wasn't bad, actually. Right. I'm assuming they got the balls from right. yeah, bigger yeah, films. Right. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, so... so and now, now um, um, you know, um, 20 years later, it's, it's interesting to see um, these dream sequences are a dry run for... Kind of some of the stuff they did in Hail Caesar. Hail Caesar, yeah, exactly, right? yeah, yeah. So. And I, and also Hail Caesar, I would, arg- I mean, I haven't actually gone back to check this, but I think Hail Caesar maybe also fits the category of a film you have to go back, go back to, to exactly, and let it grow on you. Right? I feel like uh, so. Here's the thing. So uh, basically, to tie it into the theme is that again, when I first saw it, I was, I was, again, I didn't have the eyes for it. I just didn't right. get it. I didn't have the appreciation for the comedy and stuff. Uh, this this round when I yeah. watched it this time was this the second time or you'd seen it in uh, the interim? I, I may have seen like bits and pieces like on okay. television, but I don't okay. remember ever sitting down and watching it again. Randomly. Right, but you were aware of this growing yeah growing cult. thing and right. people like just having reverence for this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah And me just not. I just I just it's, had this sort of like mild kind of like misunderstanding. Yeah, it's it's it. it's almost um, Rocky Horror Fever Pitch for right. some people, isn't yeah, yeah, it? It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, they yeah, know the whole movie yeah, and they act it like there's been like restaurants and stores open yeah, there there's the a Lebowski and, fest yeah, yeah, that yeah, travels yeah, around yeah, and yeah that. so so anyway so finally I just as a, so I thought you know I but I did have a feeling that possibly I had uh, that I might enjoy it if I went back to it I think most Coen brothers in general re- almost almost require multiple viewings in order to really right. get it well, right so and I think certainly they stand up they stand to, up yeah, yeah, so, yeah, to yeah, multiple yeah, viewings yeah. and I think Coen brothers in general uh, for me, the the Coen brothers have always been this sort of like um, the Coen brothers. Most Coen brothers movies, I find, I don't really get up on first viewing. Oh, okay. I find that Coen brothers just find, for me, tend to be a bit of a not quite my cup of tea. Okay. At least when I first see them. Right. But if I see them again, eventually right. I kind of come around to seeing it. Right. Like my- getting, getting the the the, the genius behind yes. it or whatever you would call it, right? And so I would say honestly, like the more I watched this movie, yeah. the more I was certain that this was exactly the right movie to pick for this okay. theme because I enjoyed this immensely oh, when I watched awesome. it this time. Yeah. Like really, like just like you said, this uh, Chinese bookie is probably in your yeah. top ten movies. Yeah. This is probably my top ten comedies of all time. All oh, right. Now. Oh, like, interesting. Wow. I just I laughed was- so much when really? I watched this movie. I I was shocked how much. I Really? I, I, how much I enjoyed it. That's fascinating. Time, so. Obviously, your journey with it has been 
a much longer journey because I, I, I've kind of... Is this guy kind of wanting to come in here? I don't know, he might be. Yeah. So we're, I mean, we're is coming he up knock, on the 35. Is he going to knock on it? Is that when the next thing is uh, scheduled, 4.35? I think so, yeah. So we have okay. yeah. Um, well, until someone knocks, let's just keep on in. Okay. Because they're not specifically coming... Yeah, they're, they're going to the movie yeah, store, so yeah. just keep on. Okay, so... Yeah, so yeah, so I think your journey has been because I started from a position of uh, appreciating it more. I think, but my end point is I don't think I quite love it as much as you do. Right, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, but I, but I, I would say I get it now. I get right, it. Now, so right, right. Definitely. I, in terms but even of, the Coen Brothers apparently don't love it as much as they, they're still right. Like, confused no, no. by the by the fervor pitch. To be honest with me, like. with me, it's um, I, I don't think I've seen a bad. Coen Brothers one. Mm-hmm. I, I think I pretty much like or the only I've only not seen one yet. But um, Which is what? Uh, a simple is it a simple man or a serious man? A I serious man. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. But um, for some reason, the, I don't think it actually came out in Japan. Oh, really? And it's a good few oh. years oh, old. Okay. It certainly hasn't turned up on right. DVD. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just kind of so that's why I because mm-hmm. right. you know their stuff always comes out right, right, here. Right. You know yeah, they have yeah. a following here. Right, right. For some reason, that one I mm-hmm. don't know why just. Kind of maybe it's maybe it has come out, but it's just they changed the title so drastically that you don't know what it's. No, called. no, no. I've searched for it. My guess is it's it's um, it may have played theaters, uh-huh. but I, don't, I certainly don't think it's turned up on DVD. It m- or maybe only sell through DVD or uh-huh. something like that, or, or it might be languishing on one of these uh, uh, like cable channels, like Wow Wow or something right, like right, that. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I don't know, but there's a you know you you always give it a few years in terms of things. Mm-hmm. Always take a while to come right, out here, right, right. but. That was a few years back right, yeah. now, and it doesn't seem to be turning up. No, so, right, right. yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I, I, I um, yeah. All of their films are, are good, and all of their films bear multiple viewings. Right, I think, yeah. um, and a few of them fit the category of like Hail Caesar, for example. And the other one I think is Inside uh, Lewin Davis as mm-hmm. well. Was f- just for me personally, didn't do it for me right, straight right, out the right. gate. Not not that I dislike them, mm. but they're just like because I enjoyed. You yeah. didn't quite get it, but I'm sure. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. So I think Corn Brothers yeah. are a good fit for this theme specifically. I think so. I yeah. This one because I feel like most Corn Brothers, I maybe just my particular style of viewing is that yeah. when I watch it, I just I feel like I need to see it again to really right, get it. Right. right. Just like and I, I had the exact same thought. I was like, I need to go watch Hail Caesar again. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. is uh, and so actually I thought you know what maybe I need to give all Coen Brothers movies another set. Okay. And some of them okay. I've never even some of them especially like the earlier ones like yeah. the early 80s and 90s ones were sort of like just I wasn't watching that kind of movie in, okay. at that time so okay. I never really watched them. I don't think I've ever seen any of those earlier ones. So I started just yesterday, going back to the beginning, I started uh-huh, watching Blood uh-huh. Simple yesterday. Okay. And I'm going to start, I'm going to make right. my way through the whole thing, just like you did with Cassavetes. You right. planned to do it with Cassavetes. Yes, yes. I'm going to do it with the Coen Brothers. Okay, so, so yes. it's definitely done its, its work anyway. No, so. it's a, that's, a, that's a good project to have, yeah. I think. Um, uh, certainly, in, um, there are certain films that I ha- have been obsessed with, mm-hmm. and they just, get, like, uh, I, I guess the first one for me would have been uh, Raising Arizona. Mm-hmm. Raising Arizona was great the mm-hmm. first time I watched the fuck out of that movie <laughs> over, and it just got better and funnier uh-huh. and you just saw more detail yeah, 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 yeah. and then the other big That's one nice. for me was uh, Hatsaka Proxy Hatsaka Proxy yeah was the, was the other yeah. one that really grew yeah. I was listening to um, Mark Maron uh, uh-huh. podcast and he was saying how his like, favourite movie of all time is Barton Fink and oh okay so. yeah Barton Fink yeah. I, 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 I if I was going to choose ones more specifically that kind of I think demand uh, a second viewing would be Barton Barton Fink. Fink, yeah. uh, Miller's Crossing uh, Miller's Crossing yeah the, the, uh, the whole area yes yeah, Miller's okay, Crossing yeah. more than anything else because the plot is also quite convoluted uh, so you're not quite sure why things are happening uh, so you watch it two three times and to get it but uh, it becomes richer as well right, and, right. and you realise that's fucking great mm-hmm. as well yeah I would imagine I haven't gone back to rewatch all of them but I would imagine most of them mm-hmm. probably right and so yeah, so they're clearly. Uh, it's it's interesting. People talk about the specificity of Coen Brothers' mm. work, right? Yeah. Because they are very specific. Yeah. Very, very specific. specific yeah. But in a way, which is, <sighs> which is, I, I've always, I I would like to like see a documentary or hear an interview or something about how specifically they work, because I mean, it's it's rare for have a have a director be sp- so specific in general. But to have 
people, e- even if even though they are brothers, to have yeah. people work in tandem. Yes, in yes, specific, and still I, on the same page. And still page. on the same yeah. page, and on the same page consistently for you know, 20, 30 years yeah. and doing very, very specific and knowing exactly what they want and knowing always being in exactly the same yeah, page. Yeah. I find it just fascinating. It I is, would love to know how they work. From, from what yeah. I gathered, I, I think the one thing they probably do is they hash it out before they write it down. Of course, yeah. I'm sure so, everything so, is... Well, I, I read that every single man and dude was scripted. Right, every right. Single, they said there was only one line in the entire movie yeah. of Billy Lebowski that was actually uh, not scripted, which was... Uh, uh, something that uh, um, something that was there was one improvised improvised line, but uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what it was. There's someone now starting to lurk. It looks like someone's lurking around, yeah. but uh, but until we get a knock. Over. Yeah, it's funny. I'm wondering what's supposed to be in here because they don't seem to be like very diligently. You, you, usually, what happens is that uh, is that when someone's in the room when you're supposed to be using it, people just wait until the teacher shows up or something. Okay. Like that, you know, so do you think authority. that's who we're waiting for? Is the because t- I'm I'm yeah. hoping the teacher at least has enough authority to. Check us out. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. that's a pretty shit teacher. Right? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll wait for teach. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. No. no oh, we can wrap this up anyway. If we have, we have a lot more to say. Right? Uh, yeah, I think okay. we do. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we didn't even mention Jatuturo yet. Oh right. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what, what we, in the moment we just pause and we'll just change location. Do you think? Yeah. I do like a thirty-minute uh, timer, maybe. No. no. So. Um, yeah, we've changed location. You will have noticed the sound quality will have changed. Yeah, we've got totally. background noise, traffic, rain, customers of this coffee shop. Uh, but other than that, it's so, still us two. Yeah. And we were in the middle of talking about... The specificity uh, of the Coen brothers. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, totally lost my train of thought. But um, yeah, but, but what's interesting about that, is, I think, is sometimes when you hear about uh you know a director being you know s- so specific mm. you're 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 worrying that it kind of sucks the air out of the room a bit, right, right, right. Yeah. and then there's no space for space but for whenever you hear playing. about actors working with the coins they they seem to quite enjoy it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't i haven't heard anyone say that like fuck those fuck the coin brothers like I, I've, yeah yeah i've never heard anyone say that right so usually people it's usually a very like people are very um honored to be chosen, yeah, and yeah. and usually it's very like a like a, it's almost like a status symbol to be right. in a Coen Brothers movie. So. I, I'm wondering if it's because um, obviously they're really good at casting right, mm. for, from the right, yeah, so yeah. I think maybe even if the parts specific, mm. maybe they know that giving it to a, a certain actor that mm. that actor will um, kind of be able to play within those boundaries right. without feeling confined maybe right, right, right. because also in those interviews with people who say they love working with the Brothers, on the one hand not only do they not complain about uh, not being able to improv or doing whatever they like they also I've heard people refer to it it's, it's almost like having like a safety net or mm. something like you feel really safe mm. to do whatever you right, want to right, do yeah. because so it's interesting it, I'm not quite sure how that would work. Mm. I'm, I'm not yeah. quite sure. Well, I get the impression that they they are given freedom to improvise, but often uh, it's sort of like they take several takes. And yeah. They're given the freedom to improvise, but just often they never choose those takes. No, yes, right? exactly. And, and like, yes. like what I what I heard was that in the Big Lebowski, there's only one line in the entire movie that was improvised. Right. That wasn't scripted. Right. Uh, that was done by. Um, uh, it, I can't even remember what move what uh, what line it was, uh, but done by Jeff Bridges. And, uh, right, and uh, so yeah, so maybe they uh, give them li- uh, leeway to do it, but then they just don't use it. Right, right. right. Uh, the line that made me—it's um, funny. Again, I find the Big Lebowski massively enjoyable, and you were saying it's now in your top ten maybe comedy films. Mm. It's funny. I, even though it is a, a funny film and there's funny bits in it, I, I, the, I don't remember actually laughing out loud. Maybe. Oh really? I, I, I for was... me, more of a. Like a, just a, a general amusement and mm. a smile on my face. Right, right, the right. only the, there was one line that made me laugh at uh, I, was when when someone said oh, he's a nihilist, and then the other the other guy said, "Ah, oh, that that must be exhausting." <laughs> <laughs> I, I quite like that line. But it yeah. been nothing, man. You know, I mean, like, yeah. Right. It, it's yeah. I don't know what it, it's funny as well with um, in in terms of like like you said this this the cult following. Mm. The the dude character as well, right? This the yeah. Jeff Bridges' character. It's taken me a really long time to warm up 
to, yeah, yeah, to do yeah. it as well. Yeah, because like, because I know that he himself is a bit of a turn off, and I know that that he was a big part of why I don't think I really liked it in the first place. Right. Which is that it's like, well, why did why should I care about but this, this loser? Right? This boring old, old hippie. Boring, yeah, hippie, yeah. Hippie loser, right? I know lots of boring yeah, old hippies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but he's but now that I'm seeing it again with my new eyes and seeing it, yes. it's perfect. Like it's yeah, he does really he does play it really really well. Yeah. Um, and like yeah, as you said, everyone in this movie is like really perfectly cast. Yes. Uh, so of course, the big one we missed that we haven't mentioned is uh, John Turturro. John Turturro as Jesus. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Just uh, just fantastic. His, yeah, his, so. his little slow motion yeah, yeah. dance. <laughs> and I was watching a making of actually. I, I think a lot of that was probably improvised to some degree. Like yes, uh, like I think he yeah, he brought he brought a lot of that stuff. Uh, yeah, leisure suit, leisure suit yeah, 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 yeah. So, but of course none of the lines were but like maybe what what the character did yes was, and was the licking the bowling yeah, yeah, ball yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an interesting character though. it's funny what I'd forgotten until watching it this time as well was I'd totally forgotten the fact that he's supposed to be a child molester yes yeah, and, uh, yeah. if there's any elements that I mean there are a few elements here and there that kind of don't quite that that, that that's a bit of an yeah, odd one. Yeah, it is an odd one. Yeah, so and it's, and it's never go, really followed up on. No, and they go into the backstory about how he had to go around. Yeah, door and to actually door. show him walking yeah, up to the door. But then and that's it. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I thought there was definitely going to be like some sort of payoff, like sort of like it was actually like a yes. the wrong story or something. But it's uh, it's almost like um, yeah, there's there's no. I, it doesn't really make any difference that he's a child molester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I suppose maybe they're trying to make him more look more like predatory or something. Yeah, I guess. And there's like that great scene. Um, <laughs> It's just a little cutaway, but uh, when he's polishing one of the yeah, bowling yeah, balls, yeah, and then <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. just such a wonderfully <laughs> kind of obscene but looking but little. It moment. also doesn't. I mean, you'd think that someone who is a uh, convicted uh, child molester and someone who has has had to go to door to door to to say this wouldn't be that much of a showboat in real life. You know what I mean? You know, they, those people yes. tend to be more kind of staying to themselves, kind of, yes. you know, kind of thing. So it, it's almost like it was like a disconnect between those yes, two it facts. it doesn't really so make sense. So it was almost like it was something that they were making up uh, in, uh, order to, in order to increase their dislike of him and also increase the audience's dislike of him. Maybe. Despite the fact that maybe he, I, I got the impression that he really wasn't. No. But, uh, it, but it was sort of something that, that, that was just that they had told themselves. Because considering he's supposed to be like a nemesis kind of character, yeah, exactly. he doesn't really. We don't even see them play against no, each exactly, other or anything yeah, yeah. like so that. Yeah, they. And I, 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 I suppose that plays into as well is. I, I, I think with this film, you're onto a losing streak if you start almost. Picking away at it in that yeah, way, exactly. Because, like we said, it's th- it's the journey, not the destination, and it's it's gloriously silly. Yes, like it's really it is, stupid. It's very really, silly, very silly, like yeah. towards the end when we get the nihilist group, they're not getting the money, and they're like, "Well, just give us what you've got in your pocket." Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just so <laughs> stupid. But the the goodwill that's been built yeah, up, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you you yeah, kind yeah, of go yeah, with it, yeah. and and then it paints itself into a corner, mm. and it's certainly it's certainly. Uh, the Coen Brothers at their most uh, self-indulgent, mm. I think. Yeah. But what's interesting about it is um, how it paid off in a way, because mm. because clearly it's it's working for so many people, yeah. like yeah. big time, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I would argue it's probably their most successful movie, or at least their most popular movie for some for many people, right? So it's definitely the most ma- widely right, uh, widely it, loved. It's, it's probably the biggest. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think what would. Sp- a clip. No, I, I think you're quite right. I think mm. nowadays, uh, if you mention the coin, you know, people would be like, Gold. "Dude, yeah, I love Big the Lebowski." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there, yeah. Right, so. Whereas it wouldn't yeah. be, you know, my favorite. Mm. But, but no, but, I know, uh, but, but yeah. it definitely, I think it's the one that they're most closely associated with. And I've yes. heard that they themselves actually just kind of think it was, it was good. They're happy with it, but I think that they, they apparently don't really get why right. people are so right, you know, right. You know, so, I, I know the one. other people in it. Are, um, um, Shot by Roger Deakins, so mm-hmm. it looks fantastic, right. of course. Um, and, and of course, Sam Elliott. Mm-hmm. Sam Elliott yeah, we didn't talk about Sam Elliott. Yeah, he kind team. of narrates. Yeah. And uh, again, I think he's another element as well, which is like uh, something that kind of grows on you yeah, in yeah, a way. Yeah, because yeah. he, yeah. yeah. And again, I remember the first time I was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, why is he just sitting there like talking about. But then I got it. Like, it was just, it had more of like a. I, 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 I appreciated it more the second time. Yes, but I suppose it's with him as well. He's, he's just in general. An acquired taste. Mm, like yes, I've seen Sam Elliott in some movies, and I just he he's just um, Sam Elliott, right? <laughs> well, I saw him. I, I saw him in some movie. I can't remember what it was. Was it a sequel? To I'm not sure that Sam Elliott has a lot of range. No, <laughs> he was in. He was in a film. Um, there was some film. 
and I can't remember what it was called now, but it was something about like an explosives expert or something. And then he was like in a direct video sequel to it or okay. something like that. And he was the main guy. Okay. And I don't think he works as a as a main actor, does he? Uh, rarely, and rarely. I, uh, this is one of the good reasons why is because it's Samuel Elgar is big fucking massage, yeah, yeah, and, and he's the the lead, and of course the the his love interest is like half his age or whatever, uh-huh. and you're watching this film, and you know Sam Elliott, and there's this girl also in Roadhouse. Oh, okay, <laughs> and, and this girl half his age, kind of like all over him, and he's supposed to be like this smoldering action uh-huh. hero, and it was just yeah, yeah no, yeah. that just looks really creepy and weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm not buying that. So I, I think I'd seen him in a few things like that, but then you see him in something like this, and it's ah oh, okay. Then no, that's that's just about on the that's money. That's what right? he's yeah. supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect for him, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Well, we didn't. We also just skipped over Bengazara, of course, right? Bengazara, isn't yeah, it? So. But to be honest, Bengazara, I mean, I, I, I there's nothing very specific about mm. his. Bengazara plays the the producer of the porn yes. that that Tara Reid was Jammin. in, right? Log Jammin. Yeah. yeah. So and so he. Uh, um, goes to see uh, so yeah but he, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a I don't know we want Ben Gazzara in our film right, rather than right because yes. even the role David Thewlis has which uh, is really small uh, is is more he makes more of an impression right, right? Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> and they're thinking oh yeah that's very, that, that feels uh, very David Thewlis <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas the Ben Gazzara is that one, I, it Thewlis Thewlis I think isn't yeah. that Thewlis so, but D- David Thewlis uh, was also in, interestingly, the um, um, he was in the s- third season of the TV version of Fargo. Oh, right, okay. And he plays okay. the, the main uh, villain, I believe. And right. he was like excellent in that too as well. So uh, Actually, Fargo yeah. as well is another one. Yeah, Fargo about. would be other... Well, I was t- talking about things that grow on you as well. I, mm-hmm. I remember when Fargo first came out, of course everyone was talking about how it was this fucking mm. like a masterpiece yeah, almost thing, yeah. and I remember seeing Fargo and liking Fargo mm. but again just not quite getting why, mm, why it, it was so yeah. big yeah. and then on re-watching it it does come I kind of get it now because mm. it's just so like there's something so immaculately mm. epic right, about yeah. right. this small town yeah, yeah, story yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, again, it's... Yeah, some of these... Like you said, it's like you have to go yeah. through them one time, know what they are, and then, okay, and then come back to it and just sink into it's, it's, it. Sink into, yeah. yeah. And, of course, Fargo was just before Big Lebowski. Yes. And, and apparently, I, I heard that because that the Steve Buscemi character in Big Lebowski, they gave him, like, the shut the fuck up, Donnie, because he talks so much in Fargo. Right. Apparently, that was, like, a, a joke. Peter Stormare again. In, uh, uh, Stormare yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. And apparently, Stur- Peter Stormare has... Has uh, a band. He's a musician, and the name of his band is Blonde and F- from Fargo. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so like, There's a, of course uh, the connection with Fargo. Is that a few years ago, there was that movie, uh, Kumiko the Treasure Hunter. Do you remember this? No. I mean, it was because uh, if you remember when Fargo first came out, it well, <laughs> still, it, it, it kind of presents itself as a true story, right? mm-hmm. where it's actually totally made up. Right. So apparently, there was a uh, Japanese woman who saw it when it was new mm. and got the idea oh that money is still buried in the field oh. and then she went out to <laughs> um, the real Fargo right. and then ended up dying of exposure oh, really? looking for this uh, buried money no no it's a it's a, like a fictionalized oh, okay. version uh, starring was uh, it a real story though? Did yeah it really happened yeah, really? Yeah. Really? yeah I think the 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 film version that they tell is a bit more um uh, It's probably kinder to the woman in question than it deserves. <laughs> like, I, like she I, obviously had some issues there. Y- yeah, I, I think the film kind of tries to to paint her as a bit more of this kind of free spirited adventurer uh, kind of. Whereas yeah. uh, I think in reality she's just you know Darwin Awards winner, <laughs> really. Um, yeah. So and uh, we mentioned like so the the um, the music as well in this film. Um, uh, they had T-Bone Burnett as well as a music consultant right? Mm. and uh, yeah uh, there's a great tumbling tumbleweeds and this this time as well I picked up on the scene and said what's that is that the Monks there's a Monks song on the okay. soundtrack because I always loved the Monks yeah. and then of course the during the big gutter ball sequence there's this song the just dropped in to see the condition uh, to see what condition my condition is in right, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, to be honest, I have to admit, this third time, I'd never thought to look it up before. I had always assumed 
that this song was an original oh, made really? for the film. Oh, really? That was a pastiche okay. of like a late 60s uh, right, right. kind of but no, hippie it's a real song, light. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I assumed that's two no on way. the money. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a, the, a, a trip. On a cloud and fell eight miles high, yeah, yeah. and ripped my head on a jagged. I think nah, that's that's too on the money. I thought they <laughs> gotta have made this up, but no, it's a fucking uh, 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 Kenny Rogers song, right? Kenny Rogers. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So that that surprised me. I'd always assumed that uh, would. I thought T Bone Burnett must have like written that right, right, yeah, himself, uh, yeah. as a parody, but not. No, that is because uh, mm-hmm. we're not quite old enough yeah. to remember that being right, a hit, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. so. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, but also a uh, big part is that the first time you see Jesus, uh, he's, he's you see him to like this kind of like salsa version of Hotel California. Right. Right. Which then comes back later when he's in the taxi. When the dude is in the taxi, he goes, "I fucking hate the, the Eagles." And yes. Yeah, so yes. Nice. And music plays a yeah very important part in this movie. Yeah. As, as it does with most Coen Brother movies. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, well, again, it's another it's another very specific element. Mm, right. But it's interesting because I was thinking about this. Um, even though they started making films uh, earlier, mm. the, the, this and uh, the Fargo and films around this time, they all kind of shared that zeitgeist mm. with other independent filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino mm. and Kevin Smith and right. stuff like that. And to an extent, they all share that kind of um, second or third generation kind of uh, referencing earlier mm. film different from different parts of right. the but they have that going on right and what's interesting is um, if if you compare them the Coen brothers seem to be of all of those people they're the ones who have like um, even though at first they, they might consistent yeah they, well they're consistent and they at first they might seem closer to being maybe more like conventional filmmaking uh. so you'd think they would have burnt out a bit quicker uh, but yeah. Actually, they're still, still kind of yeah, growing journey, strong, yeah, yeah. And, and and kind of. Whereas the other two, for example, you know, have kind of um, squandered their own uh, right, kind of. Yeah. Uh, well, certainly, Kevin. I mean, using those two examples, Kevin Smith certainly just sort of. Uh, as filmmakers, yeah, right? as filmmakers, uh, yeah. Kevin Smith became a little bit more too self-involved, and yes, and, I'm sure he has a great other career yeah, yeah. as a kind of public speaker yeah, or whatever. Public, public but as a as a filmmaker, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't remember the last time I got ex- Oh, I suppose the I enjoyed blips. Tusk. Yeah, Tusk and, Tusk, Tusk, and yeah. Red State was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But th- they were blips after a uh, long yeah, yeah, period. Long, long, of, yeah. But yeah. and and Tar- Tarantino is is not necessarily. I mean, his movies I think are still solid. But I think he, he just spends so much time between movies that it's almost like you forget. I mean, I haven't. Uh, I was. Uh, there's maybe one or two Tarantino movies that I didn't enjoy as yeah. much but I still enjoy Tarantino movies yeah Tarantino. I don't know I, I, I've he's gone off the boil for me but uh, I am looking forward to this new one coming based up based on what, which one went off for you uh, I didn't like Hateful Eight I didn't like um, Django Unchained um, and I didn't like the Kill Bill films oddly enough I just like Death Proof which no one else seemed oh, okay. to like <laughs> I like Death Proof yeah, yeah. Um, but, you did, well, but well, again and, and Bastards? I did uh, that was okay I did go back to watch Death Proof and I found it slightly more maddening the second time I have to admit the first time I enjoyed it but but what I mean is it just feels a little bit uh, stale or, mm. or like treading water whereas I never get that feeling with the Coin Brothers right. even though they've stayed loyal to their muse mm. in a way they're still obsessed with yeah, the yeah. same stuff Yeah. but somehow that kind of focus or something yeah, has, has them, yeah 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 yeah, um, yeah yeah, I get. It. Yeah, it's, they, they, they. I think they really are something special. Right? I think they are. Yeah, I, and every I, time I a film comes out, it's it's going to be worth right, yeah. sitting down yeah. and watching. I, right? I, I am like always fascinated by, you know, like anyone that works like consistently as a as a couple or a duet. You know, kind of yeah. like the Rukorn Brothers or like you could say the Wachowskis are like that or too. Or doing an awesome or, podcast. Yeah, or or Clive and Ron, right? So, but having these types of things. I think Clive and Ron would be the first name. That would come to most people's minds, right? Of yes, course, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so of course, uh, above definitely above coins. Yeah. Um, but just, <laughs> but but just actually like, I I would just I'm very curious about how they work together so consistently and so mm. you know and it's just because you know there's always conflict, right? There's always right. Stuff, and but the right. fact, and I assume it helps that they're brothers. I'm sure they have like a like a 
a shorthand for each other, right? Right. I think. But, right. Um, um, but I mean, I can't. I can't believe that you've never heard about them being in conflict with each other. I mean, they're certainly not the Gallagher brothers from Oasis, you know, like, right. you know, the same thing, right? So they're, 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 you never hear about Joel and Ethan, you know, having a disagreement or one going off on his own, mm. doing his own kind of thing, right? It's always them together. They're always right. a pair, right? Or, or when you see them in interviews together, they're... Neither one seems to be the dominant. Yeah, or over or, no. or, or, or or you know, cutting um, the other one off, kind of, or, or um, um, finishing the other person's sentence, or right, or interrupting <laughs> anything was, like that. I was going to say uh, undermining them, right, ah. or, or changing, or you know, yeah. you fool. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, good for them. I'm glad that they still have yeah. a good relationship. No, no, so. it's 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 yeah. it's it's good. It's 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 sometimes I think I, I'm glad we did this because in a way. I think sometimes when something is too consistently good, uh, it gets undervalued, right? Mm, so right. I, I think the fact that they're consistently putting out good products mm. and they always have has almost been, they're not necessarily, uh, you know, they're, they're not the cult flavor of the month mm. anymore. They've yeah. gone way beyond yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I think sometimes maybe, you know, critics are always on the lookout for like the new Wonderkind mm. or whatever, right? Mm. And maybe... You know, it, it, I I think it would be um, f- uh, you know detrimental if we you know forget how talented they are yeah, and, yeah. and you know they should be treasured because they do s- put out. What, what, what did you think of Buster Scruggs? I really liked yeah, Buster Scruggs. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you. I know you enjoyed. Yeah, it. Yeah, I well. really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. which is again. Uh, sur- was surprising me because usually I don't enjoy Quinn mo- movies on the first viewing as much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I right. mean, I, I mean, I mean, I I, in- I remember enjoying Fargo, um, and I enjoyed, uh, you know, I I think I sort of sort of liked Over the Without Thou and uh-huh, I, and, uh-huh. uh, and yeah, I think that's another one that grows on you. Yeah, again, yeah. again, all of these. That's what I was saying. I was like, I really want to go back and just revisit all of their movies. And yeah. E- or and even the ones that I haven't seen yet. Right. So so just to really give them, I, want, I I've always kind of like written them off as that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So, but I think I, ne- I need to give them a, a second chance for everything. I, I think, think the biggest one for me that that's most that was most problematic the first time around that I should rewatch is Inside Lewin Davis. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, even though I did generally like it, yeah. I, I get the feeling that that's the one that will probably grow it. Right. You know, assuming that each film will and, right. you know, judging by... Mm. You know the experiences that I've had so far. Right, yeah. it, they always do right, right, grow yeah. in estimation. And, and I, I would say that even with this theme of like yeah. uh, you know you know not not ready for something, I would ex- extend it not just to Big Lebowski but just most Coen movies for me, Coen mm. brother movies. So so uh, I think uh, it's 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 become and just like you, I'm I'm gonna follow up and definitely it's, right. it inspired me to right uh, follow a new path. Yes, or yeah. at least uh, let's just say that uh, with the Coen brothers, I think uh, you should err on the side of caution. And Mm. probably take it for granted that it's you that's wrong and not right, them exactly and you should yeah, yeah. probably you should give wrong. it another go yeah unless of course you hit all coin brothers films and always have and mm. in, well yeah, I, I, I don't know what to tell you yeah yeah <laughs> uh, if you do hit all coin brothers films please yeah. write in yeah. and tell yeah. us yeah, yeah let us know if I remember to put the link below for the uh, mm. magic morning word circle jerk uh, please Go on there mm. and start a thread, a conversation. Right. Um, Fuck the Coen Brothers. Yes, yes. Fuck the Coen Brothers. Yeah, there we are. There right. Go. I think we're done here. Yeah. We're on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hashtag. Bye bye. See ya.
Hello. 